Hello there, everyone. My name is Crazy Caleb, and welcome to Combination Vault. This is the way the module looks. It looks like a giant vault on the screen. Uh, and what we have here is we have a series of four different uh, uh, corners here. Uh, each of them will be colored one of the three, one of the four colors: red, yellow, green, or blue. And we're going to have uh, a move counter up at the top. It'll start at 36, always. And we're going to have an unlock, which is represented by a key, or a reset, which is represented by the counterclockwise movement, in this case, and the red button. So, what we're going to be doing with this module is we're going to be setting these uh, positions, these dials, up in the top, uh, up in all four corners, uh, to the correct position. And the way that you can tell the position uh, as well, uh, in case it might look a little bit tricky with these triangles, is it gives you the direction that it's pointed to uh, via the letter uh, up on the top of the screen for each of them. So in this case, this one's pointing west. As you can see, it's pointing with a W. Uh, this is north with an N, south with a Sierra. And of course, if we were to move this one more clockwise it, or more counterclockwise, it would be east pointing right. So this is the way the module looks. And now what we need to do is we need to determine our three states that we're going to be trying to get this into and then unlocking it. Now, let's get this figured out. So in order to unlock the vault, we're going to split the serial number into three pairs of characters. So in this case, let's take a look. We've got two Echo, uh, one Papa, and Foxtrot 4. So these are going to be our three pairs, just based off of just the order for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now, we're going to interpret the, each pair of characters as a base 36 number and convert them into hexadecimal, taking the last two digits of each. So, um, I'm a bit lazy, uh, but Basically, what you want to do for converting base 36 uh, is if we, what we would do here is we would do full out calculator. So for those who are not familiar with how base 36 actually works, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking the uh, the most significant digit in this case. Uh, and the way that it works is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then the entirety of the alphabet, alpha zoo. And the way that you can actually calculate the letters very easily is simply just adding 9 to its alphabetic position. So, for example, 1 plus 9 for alpha would be 10 in this case. And in this case, for 26, 26 plus 9 equals 35. Nothing can go above 36 because you got to remember that you include 0. There's a total of 36 digits. The, the greatest one would be 1 less than what the base actually is. So, that's like a little nice little way of you getting to base 36. So what we want to do is I do ideally convert this to base 10 and then base 16, just to make it a little bit easier. So we have two. Well, this is going to be two regardless. Then what we're going to do for converting it to base 10 is we're going to multiply this value by 36. Then two, uh, 36 times this by two. Then we're going to add on the echo to the end of this. In this case, if we think about it, it's basically 36 to the power of one and 36 to the power of zero. This is kind of the way that it, uh, that it works. Power of zero. 36 to the power of zero is simply just one, and 36 to the power of one is 36. So that's what we're going to be doing the multiplications by. So now we're going to be adding echo to this, and we're going to get um, we're going to get five plus nine because it's a letter, and this is going to give us a total of 86. Now this is in base 10 still. So what we need to do now is we need to convert this to base 16. So let's figure out what we want to do. And remember, we're only going to be focusing on the last two digits of the sum, which means we're only going to be focusing on 16 to the power of 1 and 16 to the power of 0. That's all we really care about. So let's see how many times, uh, let's see what we can do uh, and subtract, let's see how many times we can subtract 16 from this answer. So minus 16. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can do 5 times. And then we're going to simply add whatever we have left to that alphabet. Now, if it happened to be, for example, like 10 or 11, you do the exact same thing that we did for converting letters into base 36. You'd simply add 9 to this position. This is an alpha, this is a bravo, and so on and so forth. But in this case, it's 56. And if we take a look at our base converter here, we'll set this from base uh, 36 to base 16. We plop, we plop in 2 echo, and we convert. And just like that, it gives us 56. So that's what we're going to be doing. If you want to, if you if you want to use that, that's going to be the way that how you convert from base 36 to base 16. Uh, it is just a little bit easier um, because converting from base to base is a little bit wacky, and it's a little bit easier to work with base 10 than that. Pretty much, almost all of us are very familiar with. So, our first pair, 56. Uh, I'm going to do the best of these on the base converter, but that just gives you an idea of how this stuff works. Now we got one Papa, which will give us three Delta, and Foxtrot four. Which might be a little bit big, 
um, it is going to give us 220. So now it gives us 220, and this is where we absolutely have to pay attention because we're going to be paying attention to taking the last, di last two digits of the sum. So this will be 20. And that's going to be our answer. Now, one last thing we need to pay attention to if two consecutive pairs of digits are completely equal, um, and add, we're going to add the other pair to the second of the consecutive pairs and take the last digit of the two sum. So what this essentially means is if there's if there is two consecutive pairs that are the exact same, so in this case we happen to have, for example, one five and one five along the lines, what you would do is you would then take the last pair that you have, in this case we'll call this 69 for example, what you're going to do is you're going to add the other pair, in this case the 69, uh, to the second of the consecutive pairs and take that last two digits of the sum. Now remember, it has to be consecutive, so if this were, for example, the first and the third, that would be completely fine as having them both in the exact same position. Very important to keep that in mind. That's what we're looking for. But in this case, we don't have any of those. It's going to be very hard for that to actually come around to um, because of the fact that it needs to be consecutive and the exact and next to each other. It needs to be consecutive and the exact same uh, position, which in itself, getting it to the exact same position is very hard. So now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to find the table below whose corners match the colors of the dials on the module. So in this case, we're going to be taking a look at the top left being yellow, the top right being green, bottom left being red, and bottom right being blue. So let's take a look. Now, this manual will look very, very intimidating at first. Uh, however, do not fret, as you're going to be only using one of these tables. And one of the nice things about this ta about these tables is there is a total of 25 pages of these. Um, however, the nice thing about these is that each each of them are color coded based off of the top left color. So in this case, there's going to be all of the reds together, which as you can see, they're all reds. Then there's going to be all of the greens. Then there's going to be all of the blues, I believe. Yep. And then all of the yellows. So it, it is quite nice that it, that it does um, portion them apart from each other. Like it gives you, um, it, it separates them via the section based off of the top of the corner. That is quite nice, that, of course, not quite nice to do that. But let's take a look and see what, exactly what we need to do here. So. We're going to find the table, but for right now, let's focus on what exactly we need to do with it. Each pair of digits, find the intersection point of the row corresponding to the first digit, which in this case will be the 5 for our first pair, and that's going to be for the row, and the column corresponding to the second digit. So it's going to be row 5, column 6. This point lies in the center of a 2x2 two two subgrid containing directional arrows. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So let's go down, let's find yellow green, red, blue. This is yellow, green, blue, red. Uh, yellow, green, red, blue. Here we go. And now let's take row five and column six, because there's going to be two sections of each of them. We're going to try and find a two by two subgrid here, which in this case, as we can see, is right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to note down the arrows that correspond to this two by two subgrid, because this is how we're going to be submitting the stuff into the module. So down, up, left, left. This is what we're going to be getting into this module. So next up, we've got three delta. We're going to be using the exact same table the entire time. Three delta. We have a down, right, uh, right, up. Okay. And then finally, two, zero. Two, two, zero, zero will give us right up and right up. Okay. So these are going to be our three states that we're going to be submitting into this module. Top level will be down, up, left, left, then down, right, right, up, then right, up, right, up. We need to get those to these three states. And now, let's take a look back up at this page here. Um, for each pair of digits in order, rotate their dials such that the directions match the that the of the um, match that uh, match that of the arrows in the corresponding subgrid, and press the unlock button. Once all three dial configurations have been correctly submitted, the vault will be unlocked. Now. The one thing that you can do, and that's very nice, uh, is the reset button can be pressed at any time to return to the to return the module to its initial configuration, undoing any progress towards unsealing the vault. Now, unpressing uh, pressing uh, the reset button will simply send you back to 36 moves. It will undo everything you've just did. And the nice thing is that you can press this as much as you want. There's no problem with this because obviously this module is going to take a while. So, now, how does the module work? Each dial is connected to a different set of meshing gears. Uh, selecting a dial rotates it 90 degrees clockwise and rotates any other dial it is meshed with 90 degrees in either direction. 
After 36 moves, the dials are fixed in their current position. So basically, that's just the last point that you have. Um, it is very easy to get to um, each of the correct positions before 36 moves. Uh, it is not required to be correct on the 36 move. It should be very important to note that down. Um, so you're just, you just want to get this unlocked as quick as possible. That's the idea. So, but this is what makes this module so interesting is it's going to rotate the dial that you select and potentially be rotating some other dials around here. So we need to actually figure out each of the moves that each of the, the um, corners does for us. Um, so let's figure that out. So the top left, as you can see, this rotates clockwise and the bottom right rotated counterclockwise. So I'm going to write this down in such a way that it makes us easy to note down what we're looking at. So I'm going to do clockwise, uh, none with a dash, none, and then I'm going to do anti-clockwise or counterclockwise in this case with an A. So that's what the top left movement does. Let's take a look at what the top right movement does. Okay, this is clockwise. So nothing for the top left. This is clockwise. Um, the bottom right move clockwise and the bottom left move counter. So CA. Okay, now for the bottom left. This is a nice and simple one. This is gonna be very helpful for us. Um, we've got a dash, dash, clockwise, dash. Now there is some very there is uh, potentially doing all four or all uh, or only one uh, gear that could be rotated, and in this case we happen to get a very nice one gear rotation. This could be very good for us. So let's take a look. Final one. Okay, this rotates clockwise. This rotates counterclockwise. So this is an anti-clockwise. This is a counter. This is a clockwise. So now we have these moves for us, and now what we need to do is we're gonna hit the reset button to reset back up to 36. And as you can see, it redid all of the moves that I already did previously. And what we want to do now is we want to take a look and see what we can do to get these positions. Now, one of the nice things that I can immediately realize is, hey, there is only one gear that actually turns the top right. And there's only one gear that actually turns the top left, too. So this actually makes my life easy. And I'm going to focus solely on getting the top right and top left set first. Because then what we can do is we can focus on the bottom left and bottom right as they're their own individuals. This is a very good example that you happen to get. This is a very lucky one that I did happen to get. So now let's focus on just the top right and top left positions. We do not care about what happens to the bottom left and bottom right for the time being. So let's set this to up. It's already set to up for the top right. So let's focus on the top left. We need to set this to down. So we need to rotate this three times because it's going to be rotating clockwise three times when pressing top left. One, two, three. So now this is south, this is north. Now what we need to do is we need to get this to left and left. Now, the bottom right actually is already set to left, so that's perfect. So all we simply need to do is rotate the bottom left one time, because this is only going to be focusing on just this one. And now we're set to our first position. So now we're going to hit the key, bar, key module, and this first position has already been set for us. And just like that, you hear that little unlocking sound, that means you've submitted something correctly. So let's take a look at our next sequence. So next up, we have down, right, and right up. So let's see what we can do. So for starters, uh, this is already in the correct position, so we don't have to worry about that. We need, to, we need to set this to right, which we can do by pressing the top right once and get that there. Now we do interact with these a little bit more. That's perfectly fine. We don't really care. Now what we need to do is we need to get this to up in the bottom right, and we need to get this to right in the bottom left, which we can do. We can do this. Yeah, this should be fine. Now, we're going to do bottom right uh, twice. Note that it will affect this bottom left one too, because we're because we're looking at this bottom bottom right movement here. So we've got that set to up. We need to set this now to right. So let's do that very simple. One, two, and three. So it's pointing off to the right. Down, right, right, up. Second position. And just like that, some more locks unlock. There we go. And now let's set it to our last position. We've got plenty of moves to spare, trust me. So. Let's get the top left and top right to right up. So let's do that. So let's set you to right. Very nice and easy. Let's set you to up. So that, west, north, perfect. Uh, oh, I didn't I didn't set it to right. <laughs> I'm an idiot, okay. And now let's set it to um, right up for you as well. So let's set this to, hmm. So let's go clockwise. We're heading up. And let's go, uh, let's go clockwise three times. Just like that, we've got plenty of moves to spare. Right up, right up. Let's hit the unlock button. And just like that, the status light happens to show when the vault opens up. Very nice solve animation. And just like that is a solved module. Now, this itself was a very simple example because of the fact that we had 
um, some guaranteed spots that we could only use for the top left and top right, as well as the bottom left and bottom right being very easy to interact with. This was a very, very nice example that we got here. So let's take a look at one more example. Hopefully we can maybe get something a little bit more complicated, but I would prefer it not because the complicated examples suck. So that was a very nice example to get though. But that's all we're simply doing is we're just basically trying to find a series of three different um, patterns that we need to submit into the module in order to unlock the vault. And just like that, the module will be solved. Now, one thing that I should mention is that there is a cursed variant of this. There is a cursed vault in this case, if we take a look here. Um, uh, now, I don't know whether I will be covering this or not, simply because of the big change that the cursed vault, um, it does not guarantee whether it is a 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. And there is selecting a dial four times will return its gearing rot ratios to their initial configuration. This module is awful. I don't even know how this, how to actually do this consistently. So I'm probably not going to be covering that at least for a long time because this module was just released yesterday. So, um, just figured I'd let you know, Cursed Vault exists. I don't know whether I'm going to be covering it or not, or someone, or so whether someone else will be. Um, but for right now, not happening. So, but for the meantime, let's take a look. So let's convert a serial number into pairs. So we've got Victor Golf here. Convert. And we've got six Charlie. We have a six Lima, converting it to Echo Delza, okay? And Alpha Seven is gonna be a six Fox Drive, okay? No pairs, no, no pairs matched, and they're consecutive either, so let's let's ignore that. Now let's find our table here. Yellow, green, blue, red. So yellow. There we go, a little bit more because yellow is the last color. Yellow, green, blue, red, here we go. And now let's find our intersections. So six for the row, uh, Charlie for the column is gonna give us uh, up, left, down, right. Echo Delta is gonna be Echo and Delta is gonna be a right, 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 up. And finally, six box trot. is going to be left, down, um, up, down. Okay, so now let's figure out what our rotations do. So top left, okay, so that's going to be three, so that's going to be clockwise, nothing. Um, counter clock, yeah, okay. So clockwise, nothing, counter clock. And remember I'm noting down A for anti-clockwise, it's just much easier to note that down, to be honest with you. Uh, top right, does all four. Okay, this will be a bit interesting. Um, okay, um, all right, so counterclockwise, clockwise, A, C, and then A, A, yeah, okay. Bottom left. Okay, this looks like this is going to be a really nasty one. <laughs> that's clockwise, that's counter, that's counter, so nothing counter. Uh, clockwise counter and bottom right. Okay, we at least get one. That's at least nice. This is just a clockwise. Perfect. Okay, not the nicest case. Definitely not the nicest, but we can make this work hopefully. Um, now let's take a look and let's see exactly what we can do. Um, because this one is gonna suck. <laughs> so let's think here. So we know that for a fact that bottom right, we do not care about it. Also, let's remove these sets. Now, I guess for the time being, what I would probably do in this position is probably focus on doing, avoiding the top right button entirely, because what we can then do maybe is do top left and bottom left to get the top left, top right, and, or just the top left, top right, and bottom left set, because we don't care about the bottom right. We don't care. All four of these have interactions with it, and we're just going to set that at the end. So my theory is either we focus on the top left and the bottom left, or the top right and the bottom left. One of the two. And it's a bit tricky to discern. So. Hmm. 
So let's see what we can do. And honestly, this is probably the part where I'd say I'd recommend noting down some of the previous sequences uh, that you've been inputted into the module, uh, because especially we're trying to figure out some of these other patterns, it's going to be very tricky to do. So let's take a look. Maybe what we can do is we can do the top left twice, so one one. That gets the upset. Uh, then we could do bottom left, which we need to rotate this to left. So one two three, so three three three. Uh, now, this does happen to be set into the correct position, which is quite nice. Um, so up, left, down, and right. So we need to rotate this two more times. And just like that, we actually happened to get the correct position there. <laughs> that was quite nice. And we we're going to hit the unlock. That's good so far. Now, let's see what else we can do. So we need to rotate this, clo this one clockwise. Uh, we need to rotate this one clockwise twice, two times. Uh, this needs to stay, this needs to go to the right, and this needs to go up. We don't care about this, though. So, this is definitely good for the first one. So we're going to mark that, and I'm going to leave an empty space there for us. So now, to get to this position, uh, we've got plenty of moves so that we can mess around with this. Maybe what we can do is do one of these. Let's hit one. Um... Two, one. Hmm, this one's tricky. I'm gonna reset. So, we know that we're gonna do one, one, three, 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 four, four. That's good. Maybe this is the case where we now swap to two and three. Maybe two, two. Hmm. Maybe if we do two one more time. Set it up. Basically, we're going to go clockwise. Um. That east is set. Hmm, I'm not quite sure. This one's a bit weird. It's all about these three and it's trying to figure out the correct pattern. So let's reset again. Let's do the one, the one, the three, the three, the three. Four and the four. That's good. So, this is definitely where you can see how this can be a little bit brute force like. Uh, this is probably one of the trickiest parts of this module, is trying to figure out the correct pattern. Um, and this module itself is very rough to actually work with. Um, maybe we'll do three first, perhaps? So, What if we did two, two, two? Bam, bam, bam. Set it to right. Um. This right is gonna mess us up. This, yeah, it's, it's totally messing us up. So we can't be two, two, two. We can't start well for that. We can't start off by setting the top list correct. One, one, three, 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 four, four. Okay. Um. So. Clockwise one maybe. That sets those two to right, which is perfect. Which is not going to help me. <laughs> um. Um. Maybe what I need to do is do one, one, three times. Then what we do is we do two, two. All of these are set to right. This needs to be set to up. There we go. Four, four. Sneaky, sneaky. That's good. Okay. And now we're going to set this to left, down, up, down. 
the way that I was thinking was was that what we can do is we can set everything to the 180 direction uh, that needs to point to the opposite direction, basically. Uh, and then what we can do is then we can just rotate everything 180 clockwise uh, because this needs to be rotated twice. Get these two set up for a double rotation, and that's all we needed to do, regardless of direction. That's all we need to pay attention. So now, let's figure out our final patterns. We need to get this to left. We need to get this to down, up, and down. We don't care about this. Um, 22 moves, plenty of stuff, plenty of time left to go. Um, let's see what we can do. So we do... So probably let's get this one set to left first. Maybe a good idea. I'm not quite sure. One, two. Rotate this clockwise. This goes to anti-clockwise. We want to rotate this clockwise. Uh, one, two, maybe. So I did one. I did one and then two, two. And I know I did one, one and then two, two. Yep. Yeah. Um. Maybe this is just as simple as setting it up for 180 degree counterclockwise stuff. A may a maybe. Maybe it's like that. So this needs to go left. This needs to go down. Down. Hmm. Aha! Here we go. Yes, I did figure it out. So we needed to set this one down. We can now rotate these uh, 180 degrees. So one, two. There we go. Left, down, up. And we can do this down, and just like that as a little more. So yeah. The nice thing was with that, uh, I was able to utilize the same thing I did with stage two, where I needed to rotate this stuff 180 degrees clockwise. But instead of focusing on two, I got that one set, and I just set those um, up four positions uh, where they need to be rotated 180 degrees clockwise. So that happened to work. Um, that's what the release to this mod. It's a very tricky mod, but it is very satisfying when you get the correct results. Uh, and it also is very nice when you get some easy rotations, too. So. As always, thank you guys for watching. Remember to stay crazy, stay cool, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye <laughs>